Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. Today we are doing a budget version of Modern Dredge, and this is a budget version of the Top 8 Dredge deck that you see running around the format. So this deck can be directly upgraded into that deck if you're looking to get a deck that is going to be competitive down the road as you upgrade it. Currently this deck is sitting at $72, but the prices on this one are fluctuating quite a bit. When I originally started building this deck, it was sitting closer to $85, so keep that in mind. Let's get into it, starting with Dredge Creatures. Our dredge package consists of four copies of Golgari Thug and four copies of Stinkweedib. Also, we have two copies of Darkmoor Salvage, but I'll talk about those when we get to lands. The entire point of these cards is to get them into our graveyard so we can dredge them out. We can play them technically if we're in a pinch, but I would argue that 99% of the time we want to be pitching them into the graveyard and then dredging them out. That is the sole purpose of these guys. If you are looking to upgrade, there's a better version of Golgari Thug, which we'll talk about in the upgrade section, so stick around to the end of the video for that. Next we have Prized Amalgam. We are running four copies of this guy, and he is the key combo piece to this deck. As you can see, he is black and blue, but our deck is black and red. We don't have any way of actually casting this creature, which means we are going to be only using his ability to pull him out of the graveyard onto the battlefield. The next creature, Narcomoeba, we're running four copies of this, is doing exactly that. This card, again, is blue, so we have no way of casting it, but whenever we dredge, we're putting cards from the top of our library into our graveyard, and if he gets dumped into the graveyard during that dredge, it's going to come onto the battlefield, thus triggering Prized Amalgam. You can now see why dredge is considered a combo deck. Now, we can't just rely on Narcomoeba to get Prized Amalgam out of our graveyard. Thus, we are running a handful of unearthed creatures, the first one being three copies of Hellspark Elemental. This is going to give us some awesome aggro if we cast it from our hand, or if we're casting it out of the graveyard, it's going to trigger Prized Amalgam, going to get that another 3-3 creature onto the battlefield. Then we have Extractor Demon, running four copies of this guy because it is a 5-5 flyer for three if we're going to be casting it out of our graveyard, which again triggers Prized Amalgam. So that's how we're getting creatures out of our graveyard. Let's talk about how we're getting cards into our graveyard. The last creature we're running in this deck, which we're running four copies of, is Insolent Neonate, and it's going to help us with this problem. This is the ideal first turn play. We'll play this card, we'll sacrifice it and have to discard a card, we'll discard a dredge card, and then we're going to dredge that card back out of our graveyard. Hopefully when we do this, we'll hit a Narcomoeba and a Prized Amalgam, so then we can have two creatures onto the battlefield on turn one, specifically a 3-3 and a 1-1 flyer, which would be absolutely crazy as a turn one play. Now let's move on to spells. The first card we have is four copies of Cathartic Reunion. This is the most aggressive card we have that enables us to dredge because we're going to discard two cards, and there's tons of cards we have to discard, and then draw three, which means we can potentially dredge three cards out of our graveyard. Often if you play this card on turn two, you're going to be flashbacking creatures on turn three just to be as aggressive as possible to try and get in damage early game. Then we have Faithless Looting, four copies of this card, and it is also helping us set up dredge Unfortunately, if we have this as our turn one play, we're not actually setting up our dredge for the same turn. Ideally, we want to discard a card and then draw cards where this is doing the other way around, but I'm not going to complain that much because it is still allowing us to get stuff into the graveyard and it's going to give us some extra cards. So win-win at the end of the day. Also in a pinch, we can flash back out of our graveyard if we need to draw an extra couple cards. Generally, I found that it wasn't really worth it or that I had other stuff going on that I'd rather be doing. And the last spell we have is two copies of Rally the Peasants. Again, we don't have white mana, so we have no way of casting this, but it does have a flashback cost that we can cast. This is often used for us to win the game because it's going to help us get in a bunch of extra damage. Let's take a look at the lands we're playing in this deck. To start out with, we have two copies of Dakmore Salvage. This is largely being used as another dredge option, or if we need some black mana in a pinch, we can also do that. Then we have Dragon Skull Summit. We have four copies of this, and we have it because it's producing both black and red mana. Gotta fix that mana base as much as we can. And the last non-basic land we have is two copies of Evolving Wilds. Now, these are here not necessarily to fix our mana base in the main deck, but it's actually here to facilitate our sideboard, which I'll get to in a second. Just hold on for that madness. And lastly, our basic lands, we have 10 mountains and 5 swamps. Now let's move on to our sideboard, which we're going to have to have a nice long discussion about. We have 3 copies of Ancestral Grudge, 1 copy of Knot of the Bone, 2 copies of Lightning Axe, 4 copies of Nature's Claim, and 5 forests. Now let's talk about why this is primarily green. Turns out there is basically zero enchant removal in both red and black, and there is a lot of enchantments that hate on our graveyard, which will completely cripple our deck. So in order to fight those cards, we're going to need to do something to help fix that. So siding in green into our sideboard is the only real viable option we have, because the main things we need to pay attention to is artifacts and enchantments, because there is a lot that will destroy dredge decks. Be advised. 
And that's the entire deck, but before we end the video, let's move into some upgrades. To start off, I promise there is a direct upgrade for Golgari Thug, and that is Golgari Grave Troll. This is a better dredging creature than Golgari Thug, and because we're not really aiming to play Golgari Thug or this creature, it doesn't really matter that we don't have the mana to cast this card, if you have it in your deck anyways. Next is Bloodgast. This is how most dredge decks in the top 8 format are getting their prized amalgam out of their graveyard, because Bloodgast comes out of your graveyard and onto the battlefield whenever you play a land, which is super effective because it doesn't mean you're spending mana to do that, and you can spend mana to do other things. This card also works really well with the next card we would add in our deck, that is Life of the Loam. Not only is it an additional dredge option, but it also allows us to grab lands out of our graveyard and put them into our hand, which we can then play to get Bloodgast out of our graveyard, which also triggers Prized Amalgam. Life of the Loam also works really well with our next card, Conflagrate, which, as you can see, it has a flashback cost of discarding cards. So we can use Life of the Loam to pull a whole bunch of lands out of our graveyard, and then just discard a whole bunch of lands to do a ton of damage divided as we choose amongst any number of creatures or players. This is often used in a top 8 deck to finish the game, basically doing direct damage to your opponent's face for 5 or 6 damage easy. And the last thing is mana base. You can always, always upgrade your mana base with all of these decks because generally lands cost a lot of money and I don't ever include them on these budget deck builds. And that's going to conclude our Budget Modern Dredge Deck Tech. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more videos just like this, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Giant Monster Games. Until next time, I'm Adrian, and don't forget to game like a giant monster.